Well, uh, I start again. So I, 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 my name is Alfredo Ortega. He is Ormi Oren Isaacson. We're going to talk about exploiting uh, digital cameras. Uh, there you go. So uh, we're going to talk about how to script uh, digital cameras, basically. How we reverse this script. This will not be uh, an exploitation at low level. This will be a high level exploitation. We actually are writing uh, interpreter uh, language uh, present in, in almost all PowerShot digital cameras. Um, we're going to talk about what we can do with this and what are the security consequences of, of it. OK, let's start with the basics. Uh, modern digital cameras, uh, I'm sure you are aware, uh, are uh, in fact powerful computers. They uh, almost all have an ARM processor um, and a lot of memory, and they are really fast computers. They are, uh, we have uh, the, the, digital the, digital uh, sorry, the digital cameras that we are studying doesn't have a complete memory man management unit. It have a memory protection unit. So it really can run a secure operative system, but it runs an operative system nevertheless. Uh, Canon digital cameras use uh, DRIOS. It is uh, uh, an operative system built by Canon. And uh, well, that is about it. We have uh, in, uh, complete, com complete computers. Uh, of course, we are not the first that uh, research into exploiting digital cameras. In fact, there is a huge project called CHD Key that is uh, it has a few years already, and he, they uh, they are very 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 incredible guys. They they build a custom custom firmware for Canon digital cameras. They enhance functionality, but this really can be used to attack a camera because we can see here. This is the main problem that this approach for this modification to work. It uh, you must download a, a firmware modification inside the memory card, but m the memory card must be locked before the firmware can be executed. So this is not a really a good way to to exploit, to take over a, a, a digital, cam digital camera because you have to physically access the memory card and switch uh, to lo uh, switch the login. And also there are other uh, requirements like a, a special file system. They need FAT16, only working FAT16. So this is a great modification, but really can be used to attack a camera. That is why this project is, in fact, very secure. We want to see if we, there is another way. Okay. So we first try to uh, run our code, exploiting the image parsers inside the camera. Uh, this way. Um, if we could find a bug in the image parsers and write an exploit for it, we could take control of the camera as the user is trying to see an invalid message uh, image uh, in the camera's playback mode. Um, the ARM processor jumps to, to the, an exception handler when it tries to read or write an invalid memory address. So what we did is write a, in an exception handler to try to find the bugs, find, find bugs uh, when fasting the, the parsers. Um, we did find some bugs, but before writing an exploit for them, uh, or trying to write an exploit, we found another way that is better. The best thing about uh, writing an, an exploit for the image parsers are that this is binary. And function offsets change from camera model to model. So it would be probably be very difficult to write an exploit that works in a lot of models. Um, we found this other method that is the interpreter and the script. When we analyzed, uh, when, when we analyzed the firmware of one camera. Um, we used IDA Pro 
and we we can see a lot of interesting strings. Uh, these strings show that there are, there is a plain text parser inside the camera. Um, this this parser is composed of you know, two parts. One is the yak, that is yet another compiler compiler, and the other is flex, that is a lexical scanner. Um, Well, we later found that, uh, well, I was saying, we find this, this parser, and this parser are commonly found in interpreters and compilers. We assumed it was an interpreter as it makes more sense inside the camera. We later found we were not the first one to find, find this interpreter, but there is no public information on how to write a script for the cameras or or any information on the syntax or uh, semantics of this language. And it is very difficult to just guess how to write an ex on a script for this language because any error causes the camera to simply shut down and there are no error messages that say why the script is invalid. Okay. So we have, we found a, a world language activated inside every camera. And so we have to reverse a complete language. I thought that is a little difficult. What uh, we, we have? We, we have how to execute the language. We have a, what are the requirements that a memory card has to, to, uh, to have to, to execute a script. Um, they have a, a little file when the script is placed and some tags inside the inside the, the boot sector. But most importantly, it doesn't require anything more than that. It doesn't require the, 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 the memory card to be locked. It doesn't require a special file system. So uh, if you have a, a, a malware running in your computer and you insert a memory card, this malware can inject code in your camera because you don't only have to remove the memory card, insert in your camera without doing anything else, and it will execute. So I say, well, that is very useful. Uh, but we need a reverse interpreter. It's not an introduction on an algorithm, but a complete language. Uh, so let's, uh, let's start from the beginning. What are the, the structure of this interpreter? Well, it's a very standard interpreter. Uh, we have a a grammatical parser here, a, a lexical parser is lex and yak. By the way, lex uh, was built with uh, an idea of Donald Knut and, uh, no, I'm sorry, lex was built by Eric Schmidt, CEO of Google, and, par and uh, yak was built by Donald Knut. It's their software, open source software that have more than 30 years uh, old. But they are like the standards of build interpreters. Basically, you have the script here, and uh, the tokenizer, the Lex parser, will start read character by character and produce tokens. These tokens can be while, print, uh, variables, names. They are basically tokens for any language. They are uh, feed to the grammatical parser, and the grammatical parser can either uh, produce code, so you have a compiler, or uh, interpret or execute functions, execute a program, and you have an interpreter. That's all. In this case, of course, the camera inside has an interpreter, not a compiler. It would be very crazy. You have a compiler in your camera, but you have an interpreter. So this is the function that does the parsing. Uh, this is a very complex function. We have uh, the string here is syntax error. The, the, uh, the string that we found, and we, uh, we see that this is an interpreter, in fact. Uh, here, we have a call to the lexical analyzer. And here's this little basic block here. Uh, so uh, we're going to start with uh, trying to do what tokens made our language. We, so we don't know, we don't know even what language is or, or, the, or any of the rules. So this is a tokenizer. Uh, it's very complex, as you can see. Uh, and in fact, it's a huge case. This is a case statement, the one for each token. And uh, the tokenizer, in fact, is a, a table based uh, regular expression. Basically, is a regular expression parser. That's why we really 
can't find the, to the individual tokens in memory. The tokens are coded inside a huge table that uh, this table uh, um, is fed to a state machine and the state machine recognizes tokens. So we, we couldn't find any tokens in the looking at the firmware or looking at the memory. We have to reverse the, the regular expression parcel. Uh, so here is a, a portion of the parser. The parser is open source, so we, we know that uh, we have the source code, but we don't have the tables. One idea that we have is to emulate this in a computer. You just, just pick up the table from memory and emulate. Uh, there is not a single table. There is a lot of tables in a, in a Lex parser. Uh, we, in this diagram, we, we look in the memory here. Uh, this is a table, in fact. We uh, implemented the table in back to C code and just recompile a standard Lex parser and then brute force it. There is. So, we're going to do a demonstration. We're going to run a demonstration of this, of this brute forcing process here. This, of course, is running in, in, uh, in, in my laptop because only we stole the stop, sorry. We pick up the tables. Here is, yeah, we are reinforcing every character. When you say success here is that a token was successfully parsed or accepted for, uh, for the tokenizer. So every number is a valid token because numbers are tokens too. Uh, now we're going to start uh, parsing the operators. So the accept, uh, this is our valid operator for this language. Uh, letters are also valid tokens because we can do variables. And we have here, we, ca we have a, a token that is a function. Function is a valid token too. So we have a function. We have if with several case, if uh, uh, with uppercase, lowercase. We have uh, here sub, sub is another token. We are accepting every token of this language. So we run this for a while and we have this. We have a lot of tokens uh, belong to this language. So maybe it's familiar to you, these are basic tokens. So this language is basic. Now we know that every camera has a basic interpreter inside, but uh, we don't have the grammatical structure. It can be millions of variations of basics. So uh, for that, we should build an emulator. Well, as, uh, as Alfredo was saying, uh, having the tokens was not enough. Um, as we, even if we tried some basic uh, scripts, very, sim very simple basic script, they appeared invalid. Uh, so we had to emulate the original firmware on an uh, emulator. We used QEMU that, is, that has the capability to emulate an ARM pr processor but can't emulate the whole camera. So we couldn't use it to boot the original firmware and try to, to parse a script with it. Instead, what we did is uh, capture the state of the machine, of the camera, as it was parsing a script that is capture all the registers and all the memory and dump it to the memory card. Uh, and then take that information and resume the execution inside our emulator. To do this, to do this, uh, we couldn't just set a breakpoint inside the uh, interpreter and take control because uh, we are not sure that that's even possible. We had to use the deception handlers. What we did. It forced the script uh, uh, interpreter to raise an exception as it was beginning to parse the script. We can see from the source code of the flex scanner uh, that it tries to access an array, uh, an array with a value that is inside the static variable. And we change that value, and then as it, the processor tries tried to access that value, it, it crashed, and then we could uh, dump all the state. 